Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast from Vital Learning. I am Morten Røvik and I'm here as always with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet Lars. Privet Morten, good to see you as always and good to be with our listeners and viewers out there. We always start off with a quick reminder with the purpose of this podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTDers. So we hope that today's episode supports you in that. If you are new to GTD, we recommend you go back and listen to episodes one through six to get an introduction to the basics of GTD. Today's episode number is number 94 of the podcast. And today's episode is cryptically titled Clarify Clarified. But... Before we go there, we quickly wanted to mention that um, a quick favor that we wanted to ask of you listeners. We are slowly yes. approaching our episode number 100. This is obviously a Woo-hoo. big milestone for us, and we wanted to make a, a special episode of it. And uh, for this, we, we thought we might ask for some of your help. So we'd really like to hear from you. If you can yes. you know, send us a, a quick uh, audio snippet or a small video um, with you, you know, just uh, saying uh, whatever you'd like to say. Thanks for the mm. podcast. Uh, congratulations on the 100th episode. Thanks for podcast number X. It really helped me to do Y. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever it might be, um, we'll yeah. put them all together. We'll see how we can stitch that together and have some fun in, uh, in episode 100. So uh, if you could send us that, that would be really awesome. You have some time now go and think about what you might want to say uh, send mm. us that email and you know where to send it podcast at vitallearning.dk indeed grab your phone and make a audio or a video recording and send it to us it's um, yeah it will be awesome really thank you in advance yeah <laughs> yeah we have yeah. awesome we're so really looking forward to that <laughs> the nicest nicest people and then nicest people are due to dears so okay <laughs> exactly so with that being said, back to today's yeah. topic, which is a really nice, nerdy deep dive, I think. <laughs> it is. Get your suspender, nerdy, nerd suspenders <laughs> on, because we are going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. Here. So, and uh, what, what spurred this was a listener question um, uh, from Gregory B, let's call him that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he ha- has given us the the the, the rights to tell his uh, full name, but Gregory B had a, Gregory had a B. yeah he had a f- follow up email to us from another email he sent to us and uh, what does he write us? Yeah, he had some just some really nice reflections that we wanted to to pick up again and um i'll I'll dive straight into the email that he uh he sent us um the topic was a small change in wording with a profound impact which i think describes it fairly uh, pretty pretty well he says dear Lars and morton here are six thoughts that relate to my difficulties described in my email uh, from earlier this year where we talked about it in episode 90 about having over 250 next actions um, so he sent us his uh, thoughts uh, separately and was happy with the, the feedback that we came up with, uh, among other things that he uh, reviewed his uh, higher horizons, for example, and, and, and did some more alignment with, with that, which, uh, which really helped. Um, but in, in this email, he says uh, he looked into the, the wording used across uh, over time for GCD. And he says, in the second edition of Getting Things Done, a central question of the main flow chart is, is it actionable? I took that to mean, can you take action on this? Then subsequently he says, I see that in Crucial Learning course for GTD, which they call GTD version three, this has been replaced with, is there an action that needs to be taken? The idea of an, that an action needs to be taken is fairly different from, can you take action on this? Then he says, I viewed actionable as a word similar to usable, doable, drinkable, copyrightable. Can it be used? Can it be done? Can it be drank? Can it be copyrighted? And similarly, he saw a post uh, that I made on on LinkedIn where I said something that was translated by LinkedIn to be, is this something that I need to do something about? Hmm. Then he says, I think I recall, but I could be wrong that David said, is this something you're committed to move on in some old recordings of, of GTD Live? And committed is much closer to I need to do in, instead of that I can do. Hmm. And last bullet on that one is, I guess I would predict that normally there are a moderate number of things that need to be done, but vastly more things that can be done. My GTD system was closer to containing all the next actions that I could do 
instead of all the things that I needed to do. And that's how I ended up with 200 to 300 next actions. Mm -hmm. So lastly, he says, it reminds me of a quote from a British TV show. Yes, Prime Minister, there's, there's a lot of things that people want you to do and lots of things you should do and any number of things you can do, but very few things you have to do. After all, yeah. it's up to you. You're the boss. <laughs> and he sends exactly. a, a link that we can include in the show notes. He says, uh, wraps up by saying, I hope you find this food for thought with my deepest mm. respect, <laughs> with my deepest respect all the important and helpful work you are doing, Gregory. Mm. Thanks so much, Gregory. Mm, thank you, Gregory. And this, what he's uh, touching upon is that the, um, um, it is the, the, the one thing that I always tell all my clients and all my coaching, sorry, um, training um, clients and when we are in a training situation, the things that you will have the most difficult is, is the clarify step. And um, to um, just to go back a little historically, like you said, he he then um, gave the, the questions um, and, and the different wordings that have, has been used. But I, I just want to for people to understand that getting things done is still in development. Is still refinement that is done to the the wording of the methodology. Like when I got on board, it was called process. The clarify step was not clarify. It was process. And that is more mechanical, uh, but clarify is, is a better word, um, I think. Processing is like Collect, something you process, do in a factory. Process, organize, review, do, right? That was the yeah, old, yeah. <laughs> old and, five steps. And, yeah, and and the, 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 I, I do, do enjoy the clarify better because it tells you more exactly what you need to do. You take something that's not clear and you clarify it to become clearer and uh, actionable. And um, and when you know if it is actionable or not, then you will know uh, enough to make a decision if you will say yes to this and allow it into your system. And and in the pre-show, I, I, I told Lars that at some point, I don't remember, it's a few years back, I had a discussion with David Allen uh, regarding this. And I said that too, because in Norwegian, I would tell people the best way of doing this is to ask yourself the question, two questions, kan uh, skal jeg, which means can and uh, am I committing to do something about <laughs> it? Skal jeg, am I committing to do this? Um, and and that is that is helpful because it helps you to make a decision. Yes, I can do something about this, but should I? Really, should I? And to answer that question, uh, as Gregory um, also wrote in another email, is about the higher horizons. Those are very instrumental in deciding. Wouldn't you agree, Lars? Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we spoke about that in episode 90, I think was where mm. we where we picked up the picked up the question. And so yeah, the wording is is really important. And I just I just, you know, love the the walkthrough that he did with the mm. different versions and, and what it looks like yeah. today. One last thing that he also noted in his email was that there was a wording change in um, <laughs> do delegate it defer it in the second edition mm. became do now delegate and do soon in, in GTD version three mm. and mm. do soon he, he prefers much more than than defer it because defer can sound like the, the someday maybe part and I certainly or, recognize or that pro procrastination as some of, yes. some of, some of my, 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 yeah. my a training client has pointed out to me that that's, that's yeah. procrastination, Martin. And I said, no, yeah. uh, it's not. But yes. Let's let's discuss I understand this. why they think that exactly. And yeah. um in, in Danish we also ended up using a word that sounds I think if we if you were to translate it back, it does sound like postpone, which really, yeah. you know, gives you the idea that you're just pushing things mm. in front of you and not, not yeah. moving on any of them. So um mm. I, I certainly agree as well that the the mm. do soon is just more it's, clear. Uh, yes, yeah. the decision made. And, and that has a, uh, an added benefit that if you are thinking about it as do soon, uh, it should be on your action next actions lists. And if it's not do soon, it's maybe do later, then it's either on hold, uh, something on hold, or it is something on someday maybe. No, one other, things that, one, other, one other thing that I also like to 
underline when I talk to people about the Clarify flow, especially when they, they come across it for the first time, is that um, it might give them the wrong impression of the depth of the, the series of questions, because when they first mm. come across GTD and they start to build their system, they'll have captured a lot of things. And, you know, basically everything that shows up on their list is something that they need to take action on, especially when we do mm. a you know, speech and we'll do a four minute mind sweep. You know, all the stuff that shows up there is, is basically something that they need to do something about. So they'll have a tendency mm. to really think that everything is something that they need to, to take action on. So mm. I always try to underline to people that, well, that may initially be the case, and you might have a tendency to to then keep that momentum going. I think I think that may be a sort of a, a challenge for some people that they will just put everything on their list because that's how yep. they started off with GTD, mm. and then their list will grow too long, and then GTD won't help them in the end, or at least not yep. as much as we'd like them to to be helped by GTD. So, yep. the the is it actionable question, if we go by the uh, the mm. original question. Um, then really takes on a different different form in you know should mm. i take action on this all things considered so mm. all the things going on all the things that i've already committed to you know that might change your decision um same mm. as we spoke about last time with having a more clear picture of the higher horizon that also mm. higher horizons that also impacts the decision on whether something is actionable or or not so it's mm. um there's a lot of the you know there's a lot of nuance in that question, so mm. that's that's part of the reason why I also really appreciated the the deep dive that that, that Gregory went into with all the, mm. the different variants of the question. Yeah, you are touching upon something that's that's when you start out with GTD, you you tend to capture a lot, or over time start capturing a lot, because you understand, oh, I can think again. I it's <laughs> uh, you know it's, it's a fresh breeze blowing over my synapses and I can I feel free and I can think again and then you feel like I have to capture everything uh, and then you have a lot of things to clarify of course but then you clarify it into your system good or worse clarification uh, but then your system is suddenly bogged down with a lot of things you you might want to do should maybe do uh, someday but is it do soon I are going to do something about this soon, and that that might be um, um, and, and and it is it's a good mental hygiene not to dive too deep into this as well. I think um, I just want to to pause for two seconds now and take a little step back because one of the things that we've been talking about and I will never stop talking about is that this is the thing that people struggle the most with and if you want to get really good at getting things done then then try and get really good at clarifying and and, the, and it is fairly simple let's, let's just walk you through the processes you capture something anything that has your attention that you might want to do something about that you, you will do, want to do something about or that you have a worry on. So just capture anything that has your attention, write it down. And then at some point, we would recommend every 24 hours in the weekdays, you sit down with you, you, you block out some time where you can be focused and, and uh, sh slow down your, your processor so that you can make good decisions for the future you. Because that's what it's all about. And then what you do is to ask yourself this question. You pick up one thing from the top of your list and move yourself down one and one and ask yourself, one, is this actionable? And if it is yes, then you have to ask yourself, am I really committed to do something about this? And at this point in time, you should also think about why am I on the planet? Is this in alignment with my values, my principles and the purpose of why I'm here? Uh, is this moving me in that direction or not? And if it is not, let go of it like a you know a, an overheated <laughs> potato or something. Just <laughs> drop it, delete it. And and uh, but if you're not in in the in the in in very much touch with your horizons of focus, then then maybe um, uh, you can then consider it as a someday maybe, but remember everything you put in your lists are going to bog you down and your list will either attract you or repel you. If they repel you, you're doing something wrong and most likely it's because either you're clarified uh, not very good or you put too many things on them. So, but then 
Okay, so you decided you want to do something about this. Then use a verb, describe it as uh, doing look like. So next actions is how does doing look like? And then describe when you finish doing that with a verb. Um, and ask yourself, is this finished with this one next action or do I need more? Then you have to define your decide outcome and decide outcome is how does done look like? What's my what's my uh, target? What's my my finishing line? How does that look? Uh, anything to add to that, Lars? No, that have... sounds uh, sounds familiar. <laughs> sounds like the methodology, <laughs> doesn't it? But that's, it's, and it, it may s seem to be sim simple and easy, but it is very hard. Over time, it will be, you will not feel like clarifying. And you feel like, I don't have time for this. And if you, your brain tells you that, don't listen to that part. <laughs> listen to the, the frontal cortex that tells you what I'm telling you now. Slow your processor down because the, the, what you want to, the, the least to do right when you're doing your clarification is exactly that. You want to move, you want to have action, you want to have dopamine. I want to tick something off my list, but don't listen to that part that's the amygdala, the Neanderthal part of you, which wants just instant gratification. Don't listen to that part, part but listen to the frontal cortex who talks very somberly, you know, it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so. So slow down your, your processor and and, uh, and ask yourself, is it actionable? And am I going to do something about this? And if yes, what exactly do you want to do about this mm. to get started? And what's your desired outcome? Does that make sense, Lars? Anything mm, you would like yeah, to add? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'm mm. just reminded as you as you walk through that, um, um, the, the, the questions and the reflections on those questions. Um, I was preparing um, earlier this uh, this week, so we are recording this before the uh, summer camp is taking place in in Denmark, and um, and I was revisiting the uh, the um, exactly the the questions from the clarify flow uh, as as it looks today and how we teach it in the the crucial learning version of the the seminar. Um, and it has been simplified and then as you as you you know uh, share your experience in how this uh, clarify step can be a challenge to to use properly and maintain to help you uh, use getting things done it's uh, it's certainly one of the the complex processes that's where you need the the smart version of yourself to make good decisions mm -hmm. um and um so so the simplification uh, in the new version in when we introduce people to the methodology first of all the the first question what is it is is actually not there so i'm assuming it's sort of implicit in the decision making of it's, is there an action that needs to be needs to be taken um mm. so that is also a, a difference um the delegation has uh, has moved before the two minute rule so instead mm -hmm. of you doing two minute actions that you maybe shouldn't be doing this is actually a a question that that pops up earlier in the process as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, to what we would have uh, have uh, shown you previously and then the do soon as opposed to to defer um as mm. we've already spoken about and the last yep. one that i uh, noted down was uh, the projects question is uh, mm. not here so projects are certainly still part of gtd and an important part mm. of the process but just i think to make it simpler and more easy for people to get started um this mm. is the uh, this is the, the presentation of how to how to clarify things now so mm. it's been been really interesting to see how people can pick this up and again my my gut feeling without having you know enough data to say how people pick up gtd following the the new version of the seminar it's um, it's i have a good uh, it, it feels good. I think. I think it's a, it's a good and and easier approach for people to to help them clarify all the stuff that shows up in their lives. Yes, I I do also think so. I like this the new, the new version a lot. It's easier to get started with getting things done with the new uh, the course material. Um, I I still and I'm I'm just, I'm just me maybe me being nostalgic, but to to the the point of. Um, what what is it? It's um, mm. people. This is what I think is might maybe being the the missing point is that people don't understand exactly what they have in front of them, and instead of then diving into understanding what it is, it, if it is a complex something that mm. might 
make problem <laughs> problems for your future it you you will then procrastinate it by by just pushing it on into your system without mm. proper clarification i think that is not a good uh, tactic so just yeah, to good. understand what is this really and what does it mean to me and that is a um another question i ask my coaching clients so, so what is this and what does it mean to me uh, it, it is a good good clarification because then you have to well somebody asked me to become the the you know the football coach and uh, and of course i feel honored for us they ask they ask me this but uh, what does it mean to me well it means that i have to consider if the, i'm going to do that or not but when i think about it i understand that i'm flattered but i don't have time so mm -hmm. that's what it means to me so is it actionable yes what is the next action here uh, that I can do? It is I will respond no to them and say thank you, but no thanks. If I don't take the time to do that, I think, um, you know, to understand what it really is, what does it mean to me? It's it's jumping some of the questions. So you might want to add those to your questions for clarification. And and to I don't know, Lars, if you agree with me. Um, um, what, what we found... It, in the olden days, we had a. Uh, <laughs> in the old about, days. In the olden days, when we, <laughs> we started learning uh, or teaching getting things done, we had um, um, in the seminars, we had some videos with uh, an uh, animated character called Rosa. And, and it was a point doing there that um, Rosa had to be um, creating what we called, she must be the Robo Rosa, so the robots who is her, who, mm. who clarified and organized things and and it is an a more or less a robotic um it, it can be robot how, how would you say roboticized is that is that even a word <laughs> uh, but but to 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 mechanize it at least so, so that it becomes it's you know that when you learn to 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 do anything you 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 take the step uh, out of your comfort zone trying to learn something new and and the the best way of doing that is to trying to 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 mechanize it so that it can become a routine uh, a habit that can become a routine and 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 to and what i am asking all my coaching clients to do and i would suggest that you our listener and watcher of this episode viewer of this episode it, it, i would suggest that you do is that uh, talk, talk it out now, if you're alone, that is, you might might want, not want to do that in front of your colleagues. So, so what is this? What does it mean to me? Uh, am, am I? Is this actionable? And am I going to actually going to do something about it seriously? And then, then if you ask those questions, it will help you um, decide and then make good clarification of your clarify things. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I completely agree. And I think also the, the what is it question, part of the value mm. for me was also to help me slow down. Yeah. You know, slowing down is just, mm. you know, necessary. And uh, people typically experience this when they try to clarify too often, clarify too many mm. times during the day. And it, it's, it's really hard to slow down when you're just doing and doing and doing. So for me, mm. the, the what is it question also was a, a helpful reminder to to slow mm. down. And yeah. Again, like like you touched on earlier, if you don't if you don't slow slow down and clarify properly, you will just have to do it again. So yeah. I, I yeah. you know that that'll be a part of your work during the week. It'll be part of the weekly review wherever it comes up. For yeah, you, is that you need to then sit down and renegotiate all the stuff that you already thought through and didn't yeah. think through properly. It's so like so regurgitation. I think this called in English, <laughs> but but it yeah. is it is it is David Allen is always when if you ask him um, about being lazy, he says that's a good thing, and he will probably say I'm mm. the laziest person I know, and and I would agree with him that I'm trying to be the laziest person I know, that, that I don't want to th overthink and rethink things that I can make a decision on. I'm not saying that this is easy, but it is. Uh, very beneficial for you if you slow down your processor and it's saying mm. that you need to slow down to speed up which is by the way uh, David Allen quote so you have to slow down to speed up and, and that is actually uh, what is happening is that you can slow down your mental processor enough so that you can um, think this through and make a good decision 
instead of just dragging something unclear on into your system and then you have to pay you have to pay, you have to pay yeah. later and and um but but the whole being is geared and that's the problem our our beings are geared and we've been teaching ourselves since we were small action is good if i can tick something mm. off my list i'll be a happy person i will be the person who goes you who at the end of the day i will make you who i made something but i don't know what i made <laughs> i don't know if that's the most <laughs> important things i can do something about so so to be the person who says i did meaningful progress on the most important things in my life today and then you have to slow down your processor Hmm. So, yeah, hmm. put that uh, print print that quote and put it over the door of your office. So when you leave, you can just you know look at hmm. that as you walk through and see if that uh, you can check that box today. <gasps> yeah, and it is you know that's it is uh, I I'm a firm believer in affirmations. So um, uh, write it down somewhere. You know I want to slow down my processor when I make decisions. So clarify, slow down. Hmm. Mm. And and it is there are some tricks I have tried this myself with some positive result because I'm higher associative that's a problem when or it's a challenge I think <laughs> you can call it it's not a problem it's a challenge that you have to overcome when you when you want to be good at uh, getting things done there but are no if you problems, are small new projects and yeah, yeah, correct <laughs> so <clears throat> which, uh, but when I'm when, as a high associative it is. It is not in my nature to do sequential work. And this is highly sequential work. So if you feel that this is difficult for you, hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> it's like this for all of us. I'm not saying that uh, not to, to you know, um, belittle your problems or your challenges with this. I'm just saying that if I can do it, you can do it. So, so the, and, and one of the things that I've been using as a, uh, to get me into the clarification process, getting me into the the mode of clarification or clarifying, and that is to count down from ten to zero. And why does that work? Uh, I don't know <laughs> exactly, but but the the theory says that if you count down from ten to zero, you have to you 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 are uh, summoning your your frontal cortex because this is. Uh, where you have your your strategic thinker and you are telling that strategic strategic thinker that i need you now so 10 9 8 and 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 then just saying okay now i start that has helped mm. me sometimes and uh, i don't know exactly why but if you have if you try this and it works for you write us at podcast at <laughs> vitallearning.dk and tell us if it worked for you if you tried it out so podcast at vitallearning.dk um, because um, whatever tricks we have up our sleeve, we want to give to you and help you succeed. So that's why mm, I'm telling yeah. you this. Yeah, and that really, you know, brings us back to what we've spoken about in, in, in previous episodes as well, that, you know, all of these little tips and tricks, whatever works mm -hmm. for you. We spoke about music earlier, ADHD yep. diagnoses and, and how yep. different tips and tricks can be can be helpful. Uh, we spoke about mm -hmm. the wording today. It's been a, a nerdy couple of episodes, but again, yep. these small tweaks and changes, they really just mm -hmm. have a, a big impact when we hit the right spot. So so play around with it and see what um, what helps you out. Mm. And I'm, I'm sorry for those who are really fresh with getting things done is that this has been the, one of the <laughs> maybe <laughs> nerdiest uh, uh, episodes we've had. So if you feel that I didn't get anything from this, then I suggest that you go from episode two to six, which is the five steps of getting things done, which is number three is clarify. So if you want to have the, the distilled version version of this, without a lot of nerdy thinking, that's that's the place but to go. But now you have the context of when we say, is it actionable? It could also be um, something else, you know, in, in the, the newer version, uh, is there an action that needs to be taken, for example? Mm -hmm. um, the last, ver uh, last, not version, the last uh, item that I wanted to, to add as well was that in the new seminar, we also, um, you know, there are a number of skills that we focus on as we go through each of the steps and each of the, the, the skills that we have. And one of the skills that is uh, included in one of the, um, the final modules is uh, saying no. 
<laughs> so again, I think this also just speaks to the fact that it's so easy for many of us to say yes, and, and likely mm -hmm. almost everyone listening to this uh, like, to, like to say yes. Um, and it's easy to overwhelm your system with saying yes mm -hmm. too many times. So it's mm -hmm. a specific skill to actually train as part of the new seminar and coming back to the crucial conversations and the, the foundations that uh, and, and knowledge that they have from 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 those methodologies um, mm -hmm. is, um, you know, as uh, um, spilled over into the GTD seminar uh, at, mm -hmm. at, a, at a small level. Um, and it's uh, just a, a, a really important skill to also have to be able to say no. And again, mm -hmm. that, that shows up again as part of the, the clarify step and whether it's actionable, hmm, you know, maybe, maybe not all things considered. I am, you know, I have this I want to really contribute to the team. I want to get my tasks done. I know what I have committed to doing already. I know the quality of the work that I need to deliver on these tasks and all those things considered, I'm mm -hmm. unable to say yes to this one. So saying no with integrity is, is really also a, a skill that you might benefit from uh, exploring further when it comes to, to clarifying and, and saying no to things. Indeed. And one of the things I'm reminded of now is that um, uh, this saying this you might want to write this down as well if you wanted to to remember this uh, if you listen to this is that if you say yes to something you are saying no to something else mm. make sure you say yes to the right things exactly and, uh, and that that is that is a, um, a a correct statement and that is if you hold it up with, together with the that there, all, there is always more to do than there is time for the most mm. people in this world. This is that listening to this podcast is probably because you found that out uh, or, or, or are about to find that out. So, so, so to be appropriately engaged with your world and life, um, make sure that you say no to the right things so you can say yes to the right things. So. Uh, are we exhausted? Have we exhausted this uh, topic? Do you have any yeah, I think, golden I think nuggets so. you no, like I just, to share, Lars? No, again, just just uh, just wanted to thank you, uh, thank uh, Gregory once again for the mm. reflections here and uh, providing the basis for a whole podcast episode with his mm -hmm. uh, his reflections, which were really good and again uh, thought provoking and just hope. This was helpful for for people out there listening that they, yep. you know, keep this in mind because again, this uh, overwhelming our system is just not beneficial for anyone. So really, being yep. very clear and strategic about how you use this question, use the wording that makes the most sense for you, um, but mm. but really, you know, be aware of this. Hopefully, that'll mm. that'll be helpful for someone out there listening. Mm. But remember to slow down to speed up. That's probably <laughs> the, the core of it all. Whatever word to use, so. Mm, well, yeah, exactly. I think we are at the end. And Lars, will you take us out as normal? Mm, yes, and we do that by reminding you to head on over to vitallearning.eu. Have a look around all of the different offerings that we have now, getting things done, but all of the uh, crucial conversations for mastering dialogue, crucial conversations for accountability, crucial influencer now uh, as well, the power of habit, and of course, the different offerings when it comes to getting things done, speeches, coaches, coaching, and seminars. All of that good stuff is there for all of the Nordic countries and Estonia. If you are outside the Nordics, head on over to cruciallearning.com to find your local partners. Indeed. And uh, I think that leads me to say some words about subscribe and like and everything like this. Smash so, it. Smash that. Yes. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hit really hard. No, no. But, but it, it, we, we appreciate everyone who, who uh, in Spotify, if you're listening there, go and give us a rating. Uh, everyone in Apple Music, sorry, Apple Podcasts, uh, you can give us a rating. Uh, Audible as well, um, Google Podcasts player. I think also have a rating. I don't. I'm, I haven't been in there, but if you're in YouTube looking at this, uh, please do the same. Uh, subscribe and like. If you subscribe to either one of the video or the or the audio, you will get it when it's ready, and um, and that helps us uh, spread the word because the more who subscribes, then the higher we rank, the higher we rank, the, the better visibility we have for other people uh, finding us. So with those words, I would like to say thank you for listening. And until next time, stay safe and stay productive. Bye bye. Bye everyone.
which is um, <laughs> yeah, um, because as we talked with or we discussed before um, regarding Beep. Uh, sorry, Greg. <laughs> now I gave away his name. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a clap and I will cut this. 